What's up guys, David here. Today we're gonna to talk about the five things you must know before going on a Royal Caribbean cruise. Whether it's your first Royal Caribbean cruise coming up and you're super excited, or you're a veteran and you've been on Royal Caribbean many times before, these five things are a must to know before going on the cruise. So let's get started. First thing that you need to know before going on the cruise is what type of cruise line you're going on. So you want to know what type of entertainment there is on the cruise, what type of activities are on the cruise. I'm going to be honest, on my first cruise with, with my family on the Adventures of the Seas, we thought we would just go on the ship and do activities as they came and see, be spontaneous and see what we could do. And that was a big mistake. It was too late when we found an activity that we really wanted to do or a show that we wanted to go to because some of those activities had long lines, such as the rock climbing on the Adventures of the Seas. When we decided we wanted to go rock Rock climbing, which started maybe around three o'clock. We got there at three o'clock. Even though we arrived on time, we were late. There were many people who were online and it took a very long time for us to go when doing the activities on the ship, it's important to arrive early, especially if you know that there's going to be a lot of people going to that same activity or a show. The way to prepare for these activities and entertainment is to look at the cruise compass. So it, every night that you are on the ship, they give you a cruise compass, which has all of the activities for the next day on the ship. Now, you could prepare for this the night before, but I highly recommend even weeks before or months before to look at the old cruise compasses to see what activities there are, at what time, what shows, what you you and your family want to do or if it's just you and a partner you want to see what activities you want to do beforehand so that you don't miss out and you don't have to wait on long lines for our cruise on the allure of the seas we were a little better with doing our homework we looked up shows there were and with that cruise line we were allowed to book some entertainment shows ahead of time so we were able to book the aqua show beforehand at certain at, on a certain day at a certain time. This way, when we arrive, we're able to go into the activity. If we did not book it in advance, then we may show up to the event on time, but then there may not be availability for us to sit. And if you show up to an event or show or activity and there's no availability, that was a big waste of time. It's important to note that not all ships allow you to book entertainment and shows ahead of time. A big tip I'd recommend is get the cruise compass and every morning at breakfast you discuss it with your travel partner or family and see what activities you're going to do, review it at breakfast and see how the day is going to play out. The second thing that you must know before going on the cruise is that if you purchase a drink package before the cruise, it will be much cheaper than purchasing it on the cruise. Whether you are going for the soft drink package or the alcohol drink package, unlimited alcohol, it all depends on when you buy it to get the cheapest price. Now I know leading up to the cruise, life could get a little hectic and you may forget to pre-purchase your drink packages. And you may think you could take care of it on the ship. It is possible and it may be more convenient to do so, although you may pay 30% more on the ship when you purchase the, the drink package compared to pre-purchasing that drink package off the ship before you get on. So if you are planning on purchasing the drink package, I highly recommend you do it before you get on the ship. Now, if you do have certain status, you can purchase it on the ship. And if you have that elite status, you could actually compare the numbers to see if it makes sense to purchase it on the ship compared to before. But if you don't really cruise too often and you don't have any elite status, I highly recommend purchasing your drinks before. Also, I wanted to point out that you are allowed to bring two bottles of wine or champagne that are 750 milliliters. So 750 milliliters is pretty much the normal size of a wine bottle. 
And when you bring these two bottles of wine or champagne onto the ship, it's important that you have it in your carry-on, the bag that you are going to walk with onto the ship. You don't want to put it into your checked bags because if it's in your checked bags, they can confiscate it and hold it until the end of the cruise when you get off of the ship. And the third thing you must know is to bring formal clothes for dinner at night. So if you are eating in the main dining room, room every single night, which I highly recommend. It's the best restaurant that there is that is completely included with your cruise. If you're wondering what formal clothes qualify for the dinner at night in the main dining room, for guys, it's a it could be a polo shirt with a nice pair of pants, and it could be a button down if you want it to be, but it doesn't have to be a black tie event where you have to wear a jacket, suit, and tie. Now, for captain's night, you can, for guys, you could wear uh, a suit which is good, and make sure you remember to pack your suit. I'm not gonna lie, I did forget to pack my pants and my suit onto the ship. And so for the captain's night, when you're supposed to dress really nice and fancy, I didn't have my pants with me or my suit, so I had to wear jeans, which was a little embarrassing. So I'll make sure for the next cruise, I remember to pack my really nice clothes for captain's night. And for women, a dress is good enough. It doesn't have to be too fancy. Uh, for women, a dress with uh, that's a nice blouse that isn't too revealing and is good for a cocktail party or even a wedding or special occasion. Occasion, that type of dress is good enough for the main dining room. It's important to note that you don't want to wear flip-flops and shorts and a tank top to go into the main dining room for dinner at night. It's, uh, they want it to be a little bit more of a formal setting. And if you don't feel like dressing up and dressing formal, that is completely fine too. You could go to the Windjammer or other restaurants around the ship that are less formal. And for dinner, it doesn't mean that the other restaurants uh, around the ship, such as the Windjammer, are formal as well. You could wear whatever you want in the Windjammer or other restaurants. And the next thing you must know is that you can get to your cruise port early. So you may get an email notification that your check-in time for the cruise may be 12 to 2 p.m., which may seem nice because then you could check out of your hotel, you have a little time to kill, and then you can get to the cruise. Although it says that that is your check-in time to get to the cruise, it isn't completely enforced if you get there earlier. I highly recommend getting to the ship terminal as early as 9 or 10 a.m. The reason why is because as you could get onto the ship at 10 a.m. Even though your reservation, your, your check-in time may be much later in the day. Even if you confirm with other Royal Caribbean representatives, they'll never say that you can get in earlier. It's their job to make sure that you get to the port at the check-in time. Can you imagine if everybody knew that you could get into the ship at 10 a.m.? Then you'd have thousands of people coming way too early. So this is an inside secret to get the most value out of your cruise. The reason why is because you're paying a lot of money for this cruise to have an amazing experience. And whether you show up at 2 p.m. or at 10 a.m., you're still paying the same price. So you might as well get the most value out of your cruise, get there early, there's less people on the ship. You could do some activities such as the flow rider with less lines. You could explore without having too many crowds. Also, it's important to note that you should get to your port city the day before your cruise embarks. The reason why is if there are any delays with flights or trains, buses, whatever, you do not want to miss your cruise if you try to arrive on the same day. It's best to play it safe, stay in your port city the night before, stay in a hotel, go see your friend, your family, wherever, and then the next day you could wake up bright and early and get on that ship early and leave on time. You do not want to be stuck in a random city because there were weather problems or delays and miss your cruise. 
And the next thing you must know before going on the cruise is you don't have to buy a drink package. Although they may sell you a drink package and say, which drink package do you want to purchase? As opposed to asking, do you want to purchase a drink package, you do not have to purchase a drink package. If you don't purchase a drink package, it doesn't mean you're going to die of thirst and have to resort to drinking sink water out of the public bathrooms or your own room. You can actually drink plenty of, of drinks without any purchase of the drink package. If you don't purchase a drink package, some of the drinks that are available to you would be tap water, milk, tea, coffee, iced tea, sweet tea, lemonade. And at breakfast, you could also get hot chocolate and juices, but not the fresh squeezed juices, but regular juices from Concentrate. And all of these drinks that I just mentioned are completely free when you go onto the cruise. You do not have to purchase anything extra to get all the drinks I just mentioned. One of the downsides to purchasing a drink package is that you may feel the need to get your money's worth and over drink whether that's with soft drinks you may drink too much soda or even with alcohol you may feel the need to try to break even on your drink package and drink way too much alcohol more more than you normally drink if you only think you're gonna drink a few different alcoholic drinks throughout the day or even the week it doesn't really make sense to to purchase the drink package, you could just do it a la carte and pay for the drinks as you go. A few ways that you could save when purchasing drinks would be happy hour. So there's happy hour every single day at various bars on the ship and you could take a look at cruise compass to see where happy hour is and you could save on those drinks rather than having to spend $56 a day or more for the drink package. Another way you could save on drinks is anytime you go to the port city, you could get some drinks there. So if you're going to go to Cayman or Puerto Rico, wherever, you could go to that port city once you get off of the ship and go to the local bars and those prices of the drinks are going to be much cheaper than on Royal Caribbean. They want to provide cheaper price, uh, cheaper price drinks so that you could drink more because they know that they're directly competing with Royal Caribbean's drink prices. And if you're going to be off the ship, they want you to drink their drinks instead. So this could be a great option to even try cultural drinks that you wouldn't normally get on the ship or back home. These are the five things you must know before going on a Royal Caribbean cruise. If you want to watch more cruise videos on how to save with Royal Caribbean, you could click the link on the screen. It's a playlist to tell you everything you need to know to have an amazing Royal Caribbean experience. And I'll see you in the next video.